Hello everybody, welcome to Build Fly Go. So it's been a fun building week uh, this past week. We've gotten the side skins for the fuselage uh, all basically ready to go. So you'll notice that we are, um, I'm deburring everything and getting things dimpled. Uh, you can see on the C-frame there. And uh, there's a lot of dimples. Uh, there's a few very well marked do not dimple areas. <laughs> um, but uh, getting these dimpled and getting them on the frame gives us an idea of, you know, is everything fitting right? And uh, getting things ready to prime. You'll see that this was a big chunk of this week is we have a lot of things to prime. You can see the laundrons over there and the seat back brace. Um, and uh, gosh, so that's four, four laundrons, the seat back brace, a couple of little brackets, a few gussets, and uh, four skins, the insides of four skins. So um, the skins are no big deal. I mean, none of these things are a big deal, right? Like it's the, it's all just like eating an elephant. Um, the temperatures outside are warming up, which is uh, sort of nice. So it, it's looking like that paint booth is going to come down. I'm guessing this coming month, um, it's warm enough that uh, I actually... I think I sprayed some stuff outside. Yeah, I sprayed some of the skins outside. You'll notice uh, coming up. But uh, the other thing that we did is we sort of looked ahead, and you see there's a little vent. Uh, there's the, that square hole on the side of the skin on the top there, um, and there's a vent that goes there. So I drilled all of that and got that ready to uh, put in place, and uh, we got it ready to prime as well so that, uh, you know, I figured I'm spraying things. Spray as many things as you can, right? <laughs> A lot of deburring here, a lot of uh, holes that needed to be deburred. Um, but other than that, this was this was the week, right? It was lots and lots of priming. Um, we had two, I want to say it was two whole days of priming. Yeah, you see I'm priming skins outside. Uh, it was two whole days of priming, um, whole days of priming. There's two days of priming. Um, all of the, the, most of the skins and all of the little gussets and smaller parts. And now outside, I'm priming the, the laundrons uh, because they don't really fit in the in the spray booth, which is fine. Um, honestly, looking at the parts that are left that need to be primed, there's not very much um, and definitely not anything terribly big. So uh, we're, my guess is that we've got um, maybe like two more batches of things that need to get primed and that's it. But uh, here we go. So we're actually starting to rivet a lot of these parts. The Those laundrons got riveted. Uh, the rear ones were easy. They just fit. There were two rivets that I needed help from Mary on. Um, and she comes in later in the video. And then the front ones, um, this was a little more complicated. So there's those front bars. Those are the F1040 uh, left and right are the top ones. And the 1041s are the bottom ones. They've got a twist in them that you make uh, to make them fit. Um, it's not a big deal. Getting these riveted was tricky. Uh, the same thing for the lingerons on the front, where there's the gusset that they attach to the uh, firewall. The forwardmost rivet um, there, uh, there's not any room, and I could not figure out how to get that squeezed or bucked or whatever. So uh, we went with um, Cherry Max rivets for just the forwardmost rivet of that row of five rivets. Um, and Cherry Max rivets, when done correctly, uh, have um, similar structural, um, I don't know, structural numbers. Uh, the shear strength and uh, the tension strength are... Uh, the, the same or better uh, than squeezed rivets or bucked rivets. Uh, the downside, of course, is they're significantly more expensive, right? A single uh, Cherry Max rivet can be as much as 50 cents, 75 cents if you buy them um, in small batches. And of course, they weigh a lot more. Um, you know, this it's still like tenths of ounces, right? But if you do 15,000 of them, it's a lot more. Um, anyway, so a big chunk of this is figuring out what the right rivet is, getting them properly drilled. I'm very particular about when you drill for Cherry Max rivets that they are inside the spec. I have a gauge that I use, a go, no go gauge for the holes for Cherry Max rivets to make sure that they're um, just right. And uh, even so, uh, these were very finicky to rivets to pull. Um, because of the angles there, I had to make a little fixture so that I could pull them at an angle. Because if you sideload the shaft on a cherry match rivet, it'll pop, uh, it'll break the shaft off early, um, and then the rivet won't be set. 
Uh, the cool thing is it's very clear when a Cherry Max is not set properly because of the locking uh, rings in them. The the rings won't set and you can see it, right? So it's um, it's well worth looking at the, the manual for the Cherry Max. But here we go. Uh, we're starting to Coleco on the side skins and uh, we're pretty much done for the week. Um, there's a tiny little bit of riveting that we do here, but uh, this is it. As usual, thanks for watching. Do subscribe and uh, tell your friends. Um, let us know what other like flying videos and other thing videos you want to see. But uh, of course, we'll continue with the build. We'll see you guys soon. Thank you.